If you're listening to this on YouTube, this episode is one week delayed. Up-to-date tech show but friendly episodes are on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or Google Podcasts. This is Tech Show But Friendly, Hardware Sugar's podcast, and I'm your host, Anton. And today, we won't be talking about tech news. We'll be talking about, sadly, yet another not great look for local tech YouTubers. And then just jumping right into it, a local tech YouTuber has been accused of using the data of another publication, of another tech outlet in his own review. So we'll be talking about the details of that, how we found out, my thoughts on it, And lastly, why does it matter? We're a culture that doesn't like to dwell on mistakes. And if you point out other people's mistakes, it looks unfavorably on you as if we're trying to capitalize or gain something from those mistakes. That's why the last part we'll talk about in a little bit why we do talk about these things, why it's important to talk about them and takeaways, productive thoughts perhaps. So that while it was a negative experience, maybe something can be learned moving forward. So one of my acquaintances, who is also a tech journalist, a local tech journalist, posted recently on his Facebook that he noticed that the review of a Palette 4060 by another tech journalist. I don't actually want to use names here. I I was going back and forth actually whether I wanted to name them because as a reader or as someone also when I'm reading or hearing about these kind of things, the natural tendency is you want to know. And when somebody withholds the name, you're like, ah, you know, corny man, why withhold the name? But I thought maybe names would ultimately detract from the tale itself. I think the tale has value even if we don't attach names to it. So I have an acquaintance. He's tech journalist number one. I don't really know him. I only know him because of Hardware Sugar. He's often at the same events as we are. So we've gotten to the, hey, hi, uh, na? a normal acquaintance these days. So tech journalist number one posted on his Facebook that he noticed that tech journalist number two, who comes from a completely different publication, he, tech journalist number two has his own outlets. And he has a sizable following, 206,000 subscribers on YouTube, 26,000 followers on Facebook. So tech journalist number two published a video reviewing the Palette 4060. Tech journalist number one, my acquaintance, noticed that the data that he used, some of the data that he used, a portion of that video, the data reported was lifted from another tech outlet. This one, Tech Critter, a Malaysian tech outlet. So tech journalist number two got the data of Tech Critter, used it in his own video review, and didn't attribute it. He didn't say, oh, itong numbers na to, itong data na to, Hindi galing sa akin, galing dito kay Tech Creator. There was none of that. Very clear for that part of the video, those particular benchmarks were not from Tech Journalist number two. They were from Tech Creator. In the original video, the use of the data was uncredited. There was no acknowledgement that it came from somewhere else, from another source. So the natural thought of a viewer would be, ah, this must be data generated by tech journalist number two. Siya mismo nag-benchmark nito, ito yung mga results niya. So when my acquaintance, tech journalist number one, posted publicly about it, well, that's when things went downhill. At first, tech journalist number two cropped the video to remove the part where he shows data from tech creator. I also remember seeing, I forget where, whether it was in a YouTube comment or on his Facebook where he did acknowledge that yes, that is not from me, that's not my data, but that he attributed it. And then eventually he asked Tech Creator's permission, which was denied. So Tech Creator said, no, no, we don't want you, we don't give you permission to use our data. And then from there, I guess it spiraled down some more because now the video is not even up. Yun nga, nung, when the issue came to light, at first the video was still up, but redacted, <laughs> edited out yung portion na wala yung data ni Tech Creator. Eventually, Tech Creator refused permission to use that data. And eventually, even the redacted or the edited video was eventually taken down. As of the time of this recording, July 27, I am unable to find it on the site on, on YouTube anymore. Tech journalist number two has not publicly acknowledged the entire thing, except for he did post. I, I honestly I can't remember who posted what, but I do know I saw the replies of Tech Creator, where Tech Creator was like, "No, you can't use. We don't want you using our data." Certainly, there's nothing on the Facebook page of Tech journalist number two, 
or his YouTube page to show that, yes, you know, this was a thing. The data that I presented as my own, because that would be the natural interpretation of someone who looks at the data, tapos walang nakalagay na this data is sourced from, or data collected by, or referencing, any kind of reference at all, any citation at all to tech creator. So, a very conspicuous lack of public acknowledgement from tech journalists too. I actually wish I could use names so I could stop using the very cumbersome tech journalist 1, tech journalist 2. But anyway, boil down to a nutshell, I mean, it's, it's the same old, right? And I, I, I come from an academic background a little bit. I, I was a teacher before we started Hardware Sugar. I am a teacher now. I do lecture again at my university, my alma mater. In particular, I was a lit major before I became a lawyer. And as a professor and as a student, you know, you're always very particular about citing your sources. And so this is, we'll jump into unpopular thoughts. So my unpopular thoughts. If you go through the Facebook post of Tech Journalist Number 1, a lot of the who's who of the local tech scene have, you know, they have comments and they, they have emojis. I can, I can see the post. And the sentiment is that you need to ask permission to use data. But for me, that's not true and that's not even accurate. That's not accurate from a legal point of view and from an academic point of view. Because there are the facts and there are the presentation of facts. Facts are not copyrightable. And that's the hallmark of protection. That's what you look for when you say cannot be, cannot be used. How, why can an author, a journalist, a publication say that you can't use my work? That refusal to let other people quote unquote use the work is based on copyright. The author's rights stemming from his publication of that piece. But facts are not copyrightable. Jose Rizal was born June 19, 1861. He is our national hero. Both of those nuggets of information, his birthday and the fact that he is the Philippine national hero, are facts and they're not copyrightable. Anyone can use them. Similarly, the data of Tech Creator are also facts. The information that he posted that, okay, I ran the 4060 and on this game, it got, for example, 100 FPS. That particular unit of information, 100 FPS for this game after whatever, X amount of time on Y amount of settings, that's a fact. You don't need the author's permission to reference a fact. So you don't need to ask for permission to use that data. But what should have been done is that you cite, you reference, you tell your audience that this data comes from a source. I did not generate this data. Galing to sa iba. So while anybody is free to report that data, there should be proper citation. And again, as a, I've, I've taught English before at the university level. It's always maddening to me why students... You're expected to cite when you're making an argumentative essay, when you're coming up with your own thesis. You're always supposed to cite your sources. So this whole thing about, and, it, and if you don't, that's plagiarism. That is intellectual dishonesty. It never, it, it always drives me nuts why this is even still an issue because it's just so easy to cite. Yun nga, you don't even need permission from the author to be citing the data from that author. You just need to say to your audience, to your reader, to your viewers that, Uy, this data is not from me. I got it from this source. Citation, referencing, so easy to do. And yet, we have these kind of cases where it's just not done. The critics would say, well, of course, ayaw niya mag-cite kasi gusto niya ipalabas na siya gumawa ng trabaho. Na itong mga benchmarks na to galing sa kanya. That's a whole different can of worms. And we'll talk about that in the next part of this podcast. But just for now, bare facts are not copyrightable. They're not protected. You don't need the permission of the author to publish facts. But you do need to cite your source. Now, facts themselves are different from presentation of facts. And that's copyrightable. So we mentioned Rizal, who was born June 19, 1861, that he is the national hero of the Philippines. Other facts, he went to Ateneo for his high school and grade school equivalent. He went to UST for his MD. He was an ophthalmologist. All of these are facts. But if I put them together in a book, if I expound on them, if I put my own spin, my own thoughts, my own arguments using, constructing my arguments with these facts, 
then the presentation of facts, that book that I would come out with, is protected. That is under copyright. And people do need my permission, the author's permission, to reproduce that work, to use that work. So it might seem like a technicality, a legal distinction, but hey, again, that's what we're here for. I'm also a lawyer. So I find these cases super interesting because I can draw from my academic background, my professional background, and also my background as someone who also makes YouTube tech reviews. So these kind of things really kind of uh, hit a lot of my boxes. And it's it seems like a technical distinction, but it's really not. It's super useful. You don't want facts to be copyrightable. On the other hand, you do want the arguments made from those facts, the, the books, the essays, the publications, the videos, whatever, it's important for those to be copyrightable because the author has marshaled facts. He's put them together and given them more value by adding his spin on it. That's why society gives authors, creators copyright because society, through the law, acknowledges that these things have value. You've put in your effort, you've put in your time, you've made your arguments. And we feel that you should benefit from that. Sayo yan. Gawa mo yan. And even with this distinction, facts, not copyrightable, not protected, you can use them whenever, as long as with proper citation, versus presentation of facts, which is copyrightable, which is protected. Medyo sablay si tech journalist 2. Kasi yung tech journalist 1 was nice enough to post a side-by-side -side comparison of the actual video Di ko na kasi naabutan yung unedited video ni Tech Journalist 2. Yung sa, when I finally got around to checking it, na-edit na. And then yun nga, when I checked it again later, wala na completely yung video. But the one that I did see with my own eyes, I can personally attest, was that na-edit out na. So di ko nakita yung part where he used the data of Tech Critter. But based on the screenshot of Tech Journalist 1, yung side-by-side -side nila, talagang pareho. Kinapi and paste lang yung graphs ni Tech Creator, ginamit yung image na yon dun sa video ni Tech Journalist 2. And there it is. That's the presentation of facts. He got data, but he presented it in such a way. The graph, the image, the way that the colors used and everything, that is copyrightable. So yun, kinuha talaga ni Tech Journalist 2 yun, and that one you need permission. So let's say, just to deepen the example some more, if I say on air, in a video, in a recording, that... Well, you know, Linus benchmarked this and for Cyberpunk 2077, he got X, Y, and Z numbers. Parang ganyan. If I'm just reporting it, those are the facts, then I don't need Linus's permission. But if I get a section of his video, I stick it into my own video, it's arguable that I would need his permission because that work is copyrighted under him, under Linus, under the creator. And that includes images, just like the image of Tech Creator with the graphs reporting the data, presenting the facts that he discovered or that he created on his own, his findings regarding that particular graphics card. So on the facts, so medyo sablay, even with the even looking at it through sort of like a legal perspective, medyo sablay talaga si tech journalist too. If he was just reporting the facts, then sablay because di niya inacknowledge na hindi galing sa kanya. There was no citation, there was no reference. And if he was showing the presentation of facts, which he seems to have done because talagang kopya lang, parang save image as, kinuha niya yung graph dun tech, tech creator, he had the image, and then that's what he displayed in his YouTube review, sablay din because then you're infringing the copyright of tech creator. So not a great look for local tech journalism. And, well, perhaps he didn't want to cite because he wanted to give the impression that akin yan, ginawa ko tong trabaho na to. Because when you are sent a card to review, naturally, both your audience and the supplier or the brand expect you to, I don't know, maybe review the card. Like, actually take the time to use the card to try to see if it's any good. And that's the whole point of running benchmarks. It's not an abstract academic exercise, the whole point is na to try ko tong graphics card na to in these games so I can get an idea, I can get a sense of whether the card is good or not. And that flows into our last particular chapter for this episode, why does it matter? I don't enjoy reporting these foibles of other local tech journalists or other tech journalists in general. 
it's not so that and you know I, I sometimes we get the criticism na you know parang I like we like pointing out other people's mistakes so that we look better. Not at all. I I don't subscribe to that notion at all. But I think it does matter. It's important to talk about these things for two main points. One, it's really important to cite, <laughs> to tell people na galing to sa iba. This is my reference. This is my citation. This is my source. Because the whole point of research, whether it's academic, whether it's journalism, whether it's just a simple tech review, but we look at other tech reviews because we're standing on the shoulders of giants. We have our own work, but that work is based on the findings of others. We build each other up. It's better for the audience that way. Even just for a simple tech review, if I look into the other reviews of other reviewers, then I can see that, oh, my data is typical. Then perhaps this is something that can be expected for a wide variety of users, whether it's a graphics card, a cell phone, a camera. Kung tugma yung experience ko dun sa experience yung iba, then we have a high degree of certainty that, okay, for the average user, that's what they can expect. But what if my data doesn't jive with others' data? Is there something wrong with my methodology? Or did I discover something uncommon? Did I stumble across something that is, that's a special use case that people should know about? That's why it's important to look at other people's data, even to cite that data. We've done that ourselves. One of our most recent videos was, the reviews of the 4060 are really different between video tech YouTubers and publication tech journalists. And we cited some data from the reviews of Linus, Gamers Nexus, as well as other tech YouTubers versus those of print tech journalism. And that's why, again, citation sources, references are so important because you're building on other people's work to make it better for everybody, to make your own arguments clearer, and to present something of value to your audience. So there's nothing illegal, there's nothing improper about using other people's facts, the data that other people have worked on, but you need to cite. <laughs> I, I think, for, you know, it's both for adults, whatever your profession, tech YouTuber, writer, or even something completely different like sales. When you report on something that was done by somebody else, you don't take credit for that. You don't say na, ah, oh, tumaas yung sales natin by 12%. That's it. Tumaas by 12% because actually itong guy sa District 2 natin, sobrang umikot siya and tumaas yung sales natin. You always attribute facts to the proper source, the proper reference. That makes your own argument better. That makes it easier for your audience, your reader, your viewer to get your point to get more value out of what you yourself are creating. That's why I always emphasize to my students, even to my own staff when we're doing the YouTube videos, is that always reference, where did this come from? I've, I've Ren, our editor, knows this. Sometimes I ask her, na, don't let's not use this, let's change it. Because even I, I'm uncomfortable even just showing clips from other tech YouTubers. Even though a lot of people do that just for simple B-roll, I try to shy away from that. And definitely, if there is some kind of data generated, we're always citing our sources. Again, because that's my background. I, I've, I'm an English major. I had to do a thesis to complete that degree. I'm a, law, I'm a Juris Doctor, so that was my law degree. I had to complete another thesis for that law degree. Both times, citation, reference source, super important. As a professor... Same banana. I always tell my students, I want to know where this came from. And it's so super easy to cite. Footnote, text on the bottom if it's a video. I mean, you know, there is no reason why you shouldn't be able to cite. And just as a very real-world example, Craft Computing, a foreign tech YouTube channel, had a great video recently on why the coverage of the 4060 is missing the point. And so he references other videos by all of the other larger tech YouTubers. But his argument was that it misses the point. And then he had another video where he talks to Hardware Unboxed and they kind of debate in a very civilized manner the point of craft computing. Kung may katuturan ba yung sinasabi ni craft computing or if Hardware Unboxed thinks that, well, you know, I think our testing methodology is accurate. It's, and again, that's a great thing about citations. When you can build on the work of others, new dialogue, new discourse, interesting ways of looking at the problem, different approaches, 
appear. And that's why reference and citations are super important. And I think, yeah, I've really kind of belabored that point home. But yeah, facts, you can cite facts. But again, you have to cite where they came from. And the last point why I decided to devote a podcast to this is that I hope that it gives more focus to the issue. My acquaintance tech journalist one, you can really feel... I'm imparting my own interpretation to it, but I can really feel his anger na he's a very careful guy. He does the benchmarks. So yung dating sa kanya, itong si tech journalist too, again, trying to pass off somebody's work. You know, most of us do the work. And yet, there are some members of the community that are kind of frivolous about the work that other people do, are maybe not as careful in citing that they're using that work. That's damaging to everybody in the community, not just the people who make the reviews, but also the audience. Because it will bring up the perennial question in everybody's minds, can I trust this guy? And moreover, can I trust local tech journalists? Yun nga, they're really, I really kind of feel for these, for the tech journalists dito sa atin na yun talaga yung full-time job niya. You know, Hardware Sugar, we're a tech channel, but our main avenue of revenue is really the shop. We cover tech, sort of like as a happy accident to our workings in the shop. But we don't rely on the channel and social media for the bread that we eat, kumbaga. But for others, this can be their full-time job and they devote like 100% their heart, their soul, their passion to it. And it can really be aggravating when you see other people not taking it as seriously. And it undermines everyone's credibility. Mapapaisip ka ngayon if you can trust any local tech journalist. And I hate to bring it up again, but what comes to mind is the Yuga Tech fiasco with the phones. They were reviewing a phone before, and in the B-roll of the video, they showed the user playing a game on the on the phone, but he wasn't actually playing. He was just playing a video. But the way it was cut seemed to imply to the viewer that they were actually playing instead of just watching a video. Obviously, the performance of the phone is miles different whether it's actually playing the game versus just playing a video of that game. So cases like that, cases like this, really bring into question that you have these reviewers telling you that, yes, I think this phone is great. If I were you, I would buy it. Yes, I think this CPU is the best ever for games. And if I were you, I would buy it. Ganito, ganyan. But how can you trust their recommendations if they don't actually do the work? If they don't actually try out the products that they say they are trying? With us, we actually take a very long time to review. And I do feel kind of bad for the brand sometimes that, you know, kind of have to follow up. They don't need to follow up. Like, we will send out, we will, we will make the review. But a lot of the time, because YouTube is not 100% our focus, it does take time for us to do the benchmarks, come up with a video, and actually release the video. Like, the lead time is around four weeks to five weeks. So, Sometimes it's over a month from us getting the product to actually releasing the video on the product because we really try out the product. <laughs> the numbers that we show, if we're using other people's data, we will cite. But for the most part, the numbers that we generate from testing the CPU coolers, testing the GPUs, I mean, all of those things, that is usually from our own experience because we do take the time to do it. it we might be a bit slower, Hindi kami magsuscoop na, oh, ito yung pinakabagong graphics card and ito yung benchmarks niya. We won't be like that ever, but we do take the time to do the job right. Even just the word, review, it means I took a look at it already. I viewed it before. Now, the review is me taking a look back. What did I like about that product? What did I not like about that product? But review implies that you viewed it before, that you put in the work to try to figure out, is this a good product? So we do talk about these things when they come up from the local community because it's something good for everyone to know. I hope that distinction between facts and presentation of facts is useful to someone, whether you're a creator or someone who just has a sort of legal interest in copyright. And ultimately, it's a reminder for all of us to do better. I can understand where the desire or where the impetus for using video instead of an actual game footage or using someone's or getting data from someone else and then putting it in your YouTube video. Alam kung saan magagaling. I understand YouTube is a grind. I understand that it takes a lot of effort to make content. I, it, it's not noticeable 
when you're just watching, you, you have your favorite creators, your favorite tech YouTubers, and you watch their content. Seems effortless. You know, Linus has a video every freaking day. I mean, that is insane. And he has other things but besides. It seems so effortless for them to pump out content. Plus, you know, the brand send them stuff. How hard can it be? But <laughs> we're not even a full-time, you know, YouTube channel. But we, uh, you know, it's it can be quite a grind. And it can be quite a struggle also to make sure not to take shortcuts. I'm fortunate that... Well, I'm usually the face of Hardware Sugar. I do a lot of the videos. Behind me is a team that can do the benchmarking. Like, we have guys who are just all too happy. Like, I, I don't know. Like, personally, for me, I'm not even that big of a benchmark fan. Like, I will not super obsessively test something until it dies. Because I also don't think that's a very helpful approach to product review. But we do have guys who are super happy, who are all too happy to, yeah, let's benchmark this sucker until, you know, bumigay siya. And uh, I'm fortunate that we have a team, that I have a team like that in place so that they can be the ones to gather the data. And then we'll talk about it. I often ask them, oh, any experience mo assembling this uh, rig, for example? If it's like a full build or itong CPU cooler, is there anything na out of the blue, parang ganyan? Because Newsflash, again, I, it's not me. <laughs> it's not me who does a lot of the grunt work for the videos. Although I do do a lot of the work also. But for the data gathering part, a lot of the time, it's the guys at the shop. And so I do know the amount of work that goes in. I understand the desire, the appeal, the temptation to shortcut. But episodes like this should be an indicator that if we do that, ultimately, we're just shortchanging ourselves and shortchanging our audience. We cite, if you reference, we stand on the shoulders of giants. We can do better by examining the works of others and letting people know na. This work is from someone else, but I'm building on it. I'm adding to it. And hopefully, you know, if we keep having episodes or, you know, we keep having instances like this and we have brave people like that journalist one who point it out, then hopefully we can kind of stamp it out na hindi mangyayari na sa atin because it's super easy to cite. And once we start doing the basic steps like, okay, this data is from somebody else, what can we do? We can have better content with that data. What can we do with that data now available? All right. So we do fully intend to get back to tech news next week unless there is some other local halabalu in the tech, in the local tech YouTube community, pero local tech journalist community, pero sana wag naman. And yeah, I, I do really hope that moving forward, I hope I don't, you know, it, this is not a high horse. We're not on a high horse. Hardware Sugar can make mistakes. We have made mistakes many times. But if you do make mistakes, you know, best to acknowledge it. And before a mistake is even made, best to cite your sources. Best to do the grunt work so that you can honestly face the viewers, your readers, your audience, and tell them that this is what I think based on what, I actually experienced with the product. Thanks for lending me your ear. Paminsan, may nagtatanong kung may kilala ba kaming computer shop na trusted yung hindi ka lolokohin. Actually, meron. Kami. Full service PC store ang Hardware Sugar. Nagbabenta kami ng PC components. Nagbabenta rin kami ng fully assembled rigs. We clean computers. Kasama na rin yung excellent table management namin and CPU cooler repasting sa cleaning. We also clean and repaste GPUs. Nasa Makati yung physical store namin and you can also buy from our site www.hwsugar.ph na 100% palaging up to date yung inventory dun. Kung in stock yung items sa amin, available yun sa site. We also ship nationwide. Thanks for watching and maybe one of these days magkita tayo sa shop.